a pathogen that caused the plague of Justinian. So this was a plague that hit Rome in 540 AD and spread out throughout entire Europe, killing 50 million, up to 100 million people. And we've determined now that it's actually a form of plague, bubonic or septicemic plague. Uh, and we can make now direct comparisons to later epidemics of plague. For example, we know the Black Death hit Europe again 800 years later. It was the first great pandemic of the recorded world, a biological siege that brought a golden age to its knees. Long before the Black Death, a different yet terrifyingly familiar killer stalked the known world in the 6th century, striking at the heart of one of history's most powerful empires. It crippled armies, emptied cities, and left a scar on civilization that would be felt for centuries. Known as the Plague of Justinian, named after the Byzantine emperor who ruled at its epicenter and even contracted the disease himself, this cataclysm killed an estimated 25 to 50 million people. For nearly 1,500 years, our knowledge of this event came from the chilling, ink-stained pages of historians like Procopius, who watched the horror unfold. But one question always remained, shrouded in time, where did it truly begin? What was the source of this ancient terror? The answer, long buried, would not be found in the imperial palace of Constantinople or the dusty scrolls of ancient libraries. It lay hidden, waiting for centuries, in a place of public spectacle and civic pride, until the cutting-edge tools of modern science could finally unlock its secrets. And now, thanks to ancient DNA, we finally have the definitive proof. Our story begins in 541 CE, in the bustling Egyptian port of Pelusium. The Byzantine historian Procopius wrote that, from here, the plague exploded across the Roman world. By 542, it had reached the capital, Constantinople, the largest city on earth. His accounts are apocalyptic. At its peak, he claimed 10,000 people were dying each day. There was no room to bury the dead. Bodies were stacked in the open and the entire city, he wrote, smelled of death. Procopius described the symptoms with terrifying clarity, fevers, delusions, and the telltale swellings, or buboes, in the groin, armpits, and behind the ears. For centuries, this was all we had, a dramatic, horrifying story, but one without a body, without the physical evidence to prove the identity of the killer. Historians debated its origins, speculating it came from Africa or deep within Asia, but no one could be certain. The search for answers remained stalled until recently. The crucial clue wasn't a forgotten text, but a forgotten grave. Archaeologists working in Jerash, Jordan, once a magnificent and key trading city of the Eastern Roman Empire, made a startling discovery. Beneath the city's grand hippodrome, a venue built for chariot races and public entertainment, they found mass burial chambers. A place of joy and civic pride had been converted into a tomb. This grim transformation showed just how overwhelmed the city must have been, but it didn't identify the culprit. That's where a new generation of researchers stepped in. An interdisciplinary team from the University of South Florida and Florida Atlantic University decided to apply a revolutionary technique to this cold case. They weren't just digging for bones, they were hunting for a ghost. Led by Dr. Ray's H.Y. Jiang, the team focused on the one place where the echo of a bloodborne disease might survive for millennia the dental pulp inside human teeth. Using highly targeted ancient DNA techniques, they carefully extracted genetic material from the teeth of eight individuals buried in the Jerish mass grave. The question was, could they find the killer's faint genetic fingerprint after 1,500 years? The results were breathtaking. This outbreak, caused by the Yersinia pestis bacterium, emerged in the city of Pelusium in Egypt and rapidly swept through the empire, reaching Constantinople. In the DNA extracted from the victims, they found the unmistakable genetic signature of Yersinia pestis, the bacterium that causes bubonic plague. It was the smoking gun. For the first time, there was direct biological proof linking this specific pathogen to the victims of the first pandemic, right at the heart of the Byzantine Empire. As Dr. Jang stated, this discovery provides the long-sought definitive proof. For centuries, we've relied on written accounts, but lacked any hard biological evidence. Our findings provide the missing piece of that puzzle. The team had found their killer, but the next discovery would be even more stunning. After sequencing the ancient bacterium's full genome, they compared it to other plague strains, including the one that caused the Black Death 800 years later. They found that the Justinian Plague was its own, independent event. It was not the direct ancestor of the Black Death strain. Instead, 
Both plagues arose separately from natural reservoirs of Yersinia pestis that exist in rodent populations. And genetic analysis of the Justinian strain pointed to the same geographic cradle as the Black Death, the Tian Shan mountain range, a region bordering modern-day Kyrgyzstan, Kazakhstan, and China. The ground zero of the world's first pandemic was likely the same region that would spawn its even more famous successor. The next question was, how? How did this bacterium, living quietly among wild rodents in Central Asia, suddenly leap into the human population with such devastating force? The process is known as a zoonotic spillover. The Tian Shan Mountains are a natural plague reservoir, where the bacterium circulates among rodents like marmots. Scientists theorize that a climate event, perhaps a period of unusually warm and wet weather, could have caused a boom in the rodent population. More rodents meant more fleas carrying Yersinia pestis, creating a perfect storm for the bacterium to jump to a new host, humans, likely through the trade of furs or meat. And what we see with the plague of Justinian is that we had this epidemic that probably erupted in China, traveled the Silk Road into Europe, decimated Europe, um, and then went extinct and disappeared. And then fast forward 800 years, we have another epidemic that seems to have traveled the same route, erupted in China, traveled along the Silk Road, Silk Road into Europe, and wiped out again 50 million people. The final piece of the puzzle was the journey. How did this localized outbreak travel thousands of kilometers to Egypt and the Mediterranean? While the exact route is less documented than the Black Deaths, the interconnected network of the Silk Road was the almost certain highway. Camel caravans and merchant groups, moving goods west, unknowingly carried the plague with them. Eventually, the pathogen reached Egypt, a major breadbasket for the Byzantine Empire. From there, it was a tragically simple voyage. Grain ships, with infected rats and their fleas hidden in the cargo, sailed from the port of Pelusium to Constantinople. Once it arrived in the densely populated, unsanitary capital, the disease exploded, devastating an empire at the height of its power and halting Emperor Justinian's ambitious plans to reconquer the Western Roman Empire. This single discovery has transformed our understanding of a pivotal moment in history. A mass grave beneath a Jordanian hippodrome became the key that unlocked a 1,500-year-old mystery. It proves how a microscopic organism, born in the mountains of Central Asia, could travel along trade routes to bring a mighty empire to its knees, changing the course of civilization. The story of the Justinian plague is a powerful reminder that pandemics are not singular, isolated catastrophes. They are a recurring feature of human history, driven by the timeless forces of climate, trade, and the ever-present connection between the human and animal worlds. It's a lesson from the ancient past that remains profoundly relevant today. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this journey into the past, don't forget to like, subscribe, and explore more discoveries that continue to reshape our understanding of the world. Until next time.